Hi, welcome once again to our SPM revision seminar. So for tonight's class, we will be having English class and our tutor for tonight will be Miss Ayes. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to Miss Ayes. All right, Miss Ayes, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Zani. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome back to your week seven of SPM Revision Seminar English. Um, for those of you who are new, welcome aboard. For those of you who are who have been joining us since day one, welcome back. Um, let's get started. OK. So for today's class, what I'll be doing is I'm going to be doing on writing where I'm going to be focusing on your section B paper one. All right. A lot of people find this challenging continuous writing, mainly because when you're doing a continuous writing, you have to be a little bit of there should be a little bit of creativity. All right. Next, that it should be original because certain things it's story. You can't like copy paste from somewhere. Right, it has to relate to what is asked. OK, it has to be vivid. It has to be real, depending on if let's say you're doing a narrative piece. It has to be interesting. All right, it has to be coherent. When I say coherent, that means there should be a flow. There should be unity. All right, it should be grammatically correct. That means your errors should be uh, error free. Well organized to your points. All right, your sentences vary different types of sentences you use, spelling, vocabulary, your openings, as well as your ending. Because when you do continuous writing, unlike direct writing your paper one, paper one, you have the question, you have the points, and there's a format to it. Here is you're given a topic, you're given a question, and you just need to write. There is no, there is no guided reference to it. All right, so. The few types of continuous writing that you'll be asked are basically in your five questions that will be tested. All right, it will be something on descriptive writing. OK, and then you have a bit of narrative. OK, and factual. All right, and then you have argumentative. OK, and also another one that you have is what we call a one word essay which also known as an open topic. All right, so let's go into it. All right, so for descriptive, okay, we look into the place, a person, or an event. Okay, so you should use all your senses. All right, organize your ideas. Okay, choose details to include in your essays as well as create an atmosphere. So if you are describing a scene or an event, okay, it has to be lively, right? It has to be interesting, okay? That you're describing that, say, um, our national day, for, for example, right? It has to be like as if you are at that place, okay? Describe activities in details. Don't just say very subtle. Say it in more detailed, all right? Uh, activities are arranged in detail uh, in order sorry okay highlight persons that are involved let's say if you are talking about let's say national day you've got so many people involved you've got the organizers the prime minister all right the um the the march pass you know when you, when you have the marching parade so describe all the people involved okay and then capture the mood right so here you use your five senses in descriptive writing you'll use your five senses sense of sight sense of hear sense of touch, you can talk about the environment, okay? And then if let's say you're describing a place, let's say you're talking about, for example, um, you're talking about uh, KLCC for that matter, all right? You give an introduction to the place, all right? Give a physical description of place, okay? From outside moving to inside, describe what you see and hear, okay? Describe in details the activities and attractions. You can include personal uh, feelings about the place. Okay, if you are describing a person for that matter. Okay, if he's famous, mention why is he famous? Okay, what is so special about this person? For example, our very favorite topic, I mean, 
I'm pretty sure it's it's still an ongoing topic. Let's say a prominent leader. OK, so there's so many prominent leaders, right? There'll be a very general topic because they can't give you a specific one. They may give you describe a prominent leader that you know. So there are so many prominent leaders. OK, there is like, for example, in Malaysia, you've got a um, few. Like, I mean, we always say Mahathir Muhammad. Um, we say Marina Mahathir or if let's say you're going worldwide, you're talking about, let's say, for example, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama or Bill Clinton. All right, or um, Nelson Mandela. So all these people, so when you're describing them, it has to be interesting. You can also talk about their physical appearance is what you see, all right? You've seen them in pictures, you can describe them. So you have a picture of them in your mind, and then as you describe, so you give details. Be clear what you're describing, okay? Mention the spe spe special features, why the person is outstanding, for example. Use Always, if let's say you are, if the person is still alive, as I'd say, for example, like um, Barack Obama, for example, he's still alive. So just use present tense in terms of the current situation that is, he is doing. All right. So as I said, clear about what scenes or events you're describing, describe activities in details. All right. Activities are arranged in order, highlight persons involved and what they do, capture the mood of the scene. All right. Okay. Next, narrative writing. So that is descriptive. Then we go into narrative writing. Narrative writing is basically, in other words, is your story. Okay. And this story is you won't know the topic. Like, for example, for directed writing, you would know what, you know, you can kind of like guess. Okay, maybe this year there will be a report or this year there will be a letter. But for narrative writing, you cannot because it's basically an original story. OK, and it's first person or third person. It depends on you whether you want to make it first person. That means you want to put I or third person, whether you want to put she or he. OK, you should consider the flow of the story. All right. When I say a flow of the story, interesting twists, creative language use. When you're writing a story, always remember uh, a plot. So it's like you're climbing a mountain. So you're starting here. All right, you set the scene. It's very, very important because when you do your opening, all right, you, when you set your scene here, it should flow. And then when you reach, there will be definitely a climax. OK, and then so here, this part here is basically you're rising. That means you are developing, you are, you are developing, you're introducing the characters, you're developing scenes. OK, and in narrative stories, you can have dialogues because this is continuous writing. It's free flow all right as um as what uh in in the first seminar that y'all had if you had um actually watched by mr francis about narrative pieces or like uh, continuous writing is uh, basically what y'all have this triple one nine so which is the cambridge people who um they they assess your english and they look into continuous writing so uh basically you guys are, I mean, students, you all are very, very lucky because for continuous writing, there is no fixed structure. You're able to write anything. And that's why when Cambridge people, when they read uh, written pieces of continuous writing, they enjoy it because they feel like they, they, it's a lot of personal touch to it. All right. Unlike Singapore, where there is certain structure, you have to follow the very rigid. OK, so as I said, always have a good rising, okay, where you develop and then you have your falling and you have your resolution. Or if you want to leave it as a mystery or you want to leave it as a suspense, it's all up to you, okay? So when you write, always remember your plot is very, very important. This one, okay, you start and then you go on. Characters, you can have both, you can have like protagonists, okay? You can have antagonist, protagonist, antagonist. So protagonist is basically the hero of the story. Or antagonist, you want to have someone like a villain. Okay, setting or places. Okay, events, the outcome. All right, so these are very, very important in your story writing. Yes, you will be, when you do narrative writing, okay, um, they say that narrative pieces can be very, very, um, suitable for people who have a flow or, or, or 
more of a creative writer, but anyone can do a narrative writing. And narrative writing is easier as compared to the other five or op four options, I would say. All right. Next, you have fact factual essays. All right. So factual based essays, it's basically an objective manner and you need to have examples to support your idea. So in other words, you need to have elaboration. You need to elaborate on your points. That is very, very important. So in any factual essay, you need to firstly understand the question, all right? Know what the question is asking. So when you've understood the question, you should always have a good knowledge on the topic. I've heard um, students and I have seen students and I have been around with students or um, my age groups uh, people who we tend to they tend to read or memorize certain paragraphs like for example the introduction line or um or like first paragraph you know first paragraph is always introduction for example a factual essay they will tend to read and memorize eat different types of factual essays i would say try not to do that because if you're going to memorize 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 and then you're going to like just you know like um i'm going to put it in i'm going to put it in vector commas vomited out it is not it is not right because you your points might be uh, mixed up. So just have a very uh, maybe a very standard line. All right. For example, um, you can just have like in in the in the era of technology. Okay, and then you continue. Just you know, just pick up phrases more than you know memorizing a, a, an essay. Okay, you should always have good knowledge on the topic. If let's say it's something that is very very difficult. I would suggest you not to do it. Try other other um, questions. Jot down relevant relevant points. It means when you have an um, when you have a topic or the question, please jot down the points because it's easier to relate to. All right. Then you arrange the points. You elaborate with examples. All right. Elaborate with examples. Elaborate with supporting. Okay. All right. So that is factual essay. Then you have this, which is argumentative argumentative it's considered good and bad side so if you're arguing a topic you have um, balanced viewpoints you can support try and avoid narrow-minded try not to say that this one is better than the other give both sides and then you in your in the end you give your own opinion be open all right sequence and logical connectors if you are supporting an idea you use certain words you need to use i support i agree all right. So in, in short, an argumentative essay, you should look at both sides of the argument as this will help you present your case better. OK, so try and have three to five ideas. OK, or points to support your stand. You should support each point with ample details. Use examples and illustration to support your ideas or points. Decide the order in which you want to present your ideas. All right. Uh, for an for an effective essay, start with something that you are very, very sure of. That means you are 100%. This is my support. This is my, um, how you say, uh, the most promising one. And then you go into something that is good or convincing. All right. So that is argumentative. Then you also have an open topic. Open topic, or in other words, it consists of one or two words. So that means they, they will use have at number five, you know, the famous things like pollution, family, uh, friends, love. So it's just general title and it's very open. OK, the word pollution itself, it's really generally. I mean, it's like you can talk about so many things, but just pick on one aspect that you want to write on because you're going to write about everything within that period of time. OK, so if if you all uh, if you have been doing open topics, one word answers, you may want to look into the different. Um, this one you might want to look at the trend of past year papers of the types of questions or um, topics given. OK, but if you're not very, very comfortable with open topic, I suggest you not to not to um, try it out. OK, so one word I, I say you have a lot of ideas, right? You start brainstorming. Okay, this is very important in any essay, it's not just one word in argumentative, in factual, in descriptive, in narrative. Have 
do brainstorming. Okay, select one aspect for your one word and you concentrate on that. Go through past years to have an idea, past year papers to have an idea on it. All right, okay, so this is one word essay. Now, your marking, so this is, I've, I've gone through what are the different types, all right? Uh, your, the marking rubric is goes by a band. So you have A, B, C, D, E, and then you have U1, U2, U3, all right? So for each band, all right, there is a mark range because your total marks is 50. So it's between 44 to 50. And if you're in range of A, this is what we will look into. So uh, language, okay, sentence structure, varied and sophisticated, vocabulary, punctuation and spelling, okay, paragraphs, right? When you're writing paragraphs, make sure it's in a paragraph form, not just write from at the, you know, in your paper, all right? Make sure your first sentence is indented and not start at the, you know, at here. Right, make sure it's indented and you start writing. Okay, uh, punctuation, spelling, be very, very careful. Topic, consistently relevant, that means your points relate to what is asked for. All right, interest, that means there is like, it's interesting, there is a flow. Okay, uh, if it's B, so these are the uh, pointers. However, if you go down, okay, if you're in a, B, a C range, language largely accurate, sentences, some variety in length and type, tendency to use one type. So when I say tendency to use one type, see there are different types of sentences you have learned. So you've learned simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences. So in your essay, you will need to use this type of sentences. However, if you're just comfortable of using one type of sentence, all right, you may fall under this category, okay? However, if, uh, if we're writing a simple structure, I mean, simple sentence, it has to be error-free, errors with more ambitious structures. So it's either you're error-free or there are like some vague um, structure, SVA or anything like that, okay? And then for D, however, if you go, if you go below, all right, it's more towards the, uh, the whole flow of it. It doesn't relate to the, question and this is not where you want to be. I would say the best thought is um, aiming for like a 32 out of 50 and above. Okay, so the only way for you to, to practice on essay writing is, I mean, or to achieve your grade is through practice. Okay, so like now you have time, now it's November, no, you don't, have, you don't really have much time, your exams in January, but it's okay. Just keep on practicing. Read, of course, they will tell you to read um, essay books. You know, that's what we all did once upon a time. So um, read up, practice writing, show it to your teachers, you know. And now with everything in, um, like for those of you who are in KL, Slango, or everything is like um, working from home, studying at home, type it out, email it to your teacher and ask, okay, I've written this, how do you find it? Or if you all have done any essays that you want me to check, by all means, go ahead. Um, I tend to not look at Messenger, but I'll try and look at it more now since I actually kind of told you all this, so don't don't worry. All right. Okay. So when you write your essay, what are the guidelines to it? Well, how how do you tackle this continuous writing task? First of all, you need to read and consider all the questions given. Don't just jump straight to a question. Read all that five. Okay. The, your um, ministry, as in the, the examiners have given you five, you read all five, see all the questions. What is it that you can try and see whether, um, what can you answer out of these five, okay? Choose a topic that you are familiar or comfortable with. Do not, um, do not select one, you know, that you, you think it's challenging and you want to try it out because at that day is the day. It's like, you know, you're, you're sitting for it and you won't be seeing your paper anymore. So you, there's no like, there's no trial and error. It's like there and then. So choose a topic or choose a question or choose a type of essay and, and that method that you're familiar or comfortable with. All right. 
select a topic which is within your experience so that you will not have to struggle with the content. All right. Opt for a topic which is within your linguistic ability. That means when I say linguistic ability means whether you understand the topic, whether you're able to you decipher what is being asked. All right. Next. OK, do not select topic just because you think it is challenging. This is not like a trial and error, as I, as I, as I mentioned before. All right, for weak students, for students who have, um, you know, like weak in writing, it is good to write narratives, OK, because it's story and you, you I'm sure you all have read stories and all that. So just you know, if, you, if you feel that you, you're not very strong in writing a factual essay or an argumentative essay, just try narrative. Narrative is so much more easier. Descriptive can be challenging because you may, may need to use descriptive words describing scenes, details that could be very, very hard, but a writing a narrative wouldn't be that bad because you can add in dialogues. You can have in your own, see, continuous writing, when you have in dialogues, you can just have like a normal, when I say normal language, is like how you were to speak, you put it in a dialogue form, okay? Plan your essay, so have it like organized. That means if you're writing an um, argumentative or factual, have your main point, your supporting points. If you're writing a narrative, make sure you have the starting, the climax, and the closing. If you're writing a descriptive, make sure you have, do you describe it in terms of a flow to it, okay? Write in paragraphs, okay? That is very, very important. Even though there is no marks for formatting, but they might, you might see it and see that, oh, this is not, this is not how you write an essay, okay? Uh, always when you try not to um, write and just pass it up, try and revise, you know, your language, the use of words, go through them. Sometimes it's something that you may, it's very easy for you to correct it then and then. Okay, it, it could be just a very small, small minor mistake, all right? So you revise the language if necessary, okay? As I say, remember to use a variety of sentence structures. So you can use simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence, all right? And then use sentences of varying lengths. For example, a short sentence, okay? Let's say you wanna have very long sentences, OK, you're going to have complex sentence, complex sentence, and then you can even have a bit of simple, like a short sentence in between. All right, so that it, it makes it not so um, tiring to the eyes. OK, but there is you just varying your, your length of your sentences. OK, and then choose words carefully. So try not to repeat the same word. So for example, like a word like walked. OK, um, try maybe use maybe strolled, strolled in a park or sauntered. But if even if you do not know and if you just want to say walked, it has no harm in it. OK, it is fine. But if you're if you're a person who is who have been writing, all right, and you can come up with other words besides walked, by all means, go for it. OK, and you're required to write an essay of not less than 350 words. So I know this is very, very challenging because we tend to write more than 350 words. You won't be minus, you won't be, marks won't be deducted, but the more you write, the chances of you making mistakes will be higher. Okay, trust me, because even when when I teach my students, even we, we also have a word limit, but students tend to go more than that and they tend to make more, I would say mistakes that is very, very callous OK, when I say callous means something that they they know that they shouldn't make that mistake, but they make that mistake. All right. So try and make it short and sweet. OK, and whatever, let's say you're writing factual or argumentative um, pieces, the essays, make sure you have sufficient details. All right. Make sure each of your point, you just have three for your body paragraph, three body, uh, three points is good enough. OK, if you feel like, no, I want four, four Four points for each of the point. Make sure you have sufficient supporting details. Later, I will go through a bit of some sample essays and to see how it is. All right. Now, there are some general errors 
in continuous writing, which students tend to make. The first one is using precise vocabulary. OK, so for example, he told me to be careful as there were crocodiles in the river. He told me if I use the word. All right, if I use the word he warned me, it sounds more effective than told. Because he told me to be careful, so it's just him telling me. But he warned me has more effect because um, you are being more stern. All right, it's like he warned me, so it means I shouldn't go there. Okay. Error two is spoken versus written. Okay. So when we say spoken versus written. In English language, there are many, there is both spoken language as well as written language. Okay, what we use every day in our daily conversation is spoken language, right? What we do in English language where we do exams is what we call written language. However, we tend to overlap them. We tend to use a bit of spoken in our, in our writing. So for example, I saw many types of marine life in the aqua park, full stop. For example, sea lions, sea horses, and starfish. Now, when you write a sentence, there should be a subject, there should be a verb. This is very, very important. But here, this sentence here, I would say it's not a sentence. This is more, okay, sorry. This is more a fragment. Or in other words, it is incomplete. Because as I said, in a sentence, you need a subject, you need a verb. There is no subject here, there is no verb. So it is incomplete. All right. So it, what you can do is you can combine both of the sentence by having a different word. For example, such as. Okay. A lot of students. Don't worry, it's, it's, this is not the first time I'm saying a lot of students tend to use, for example, sea lion, sea horse and starfish. OK, they tend to write that this is incomplete. You can say that when you're speaking. You know, I can say that, for example, to my friend. Oh, I saw many times of marine life in the aqua park. For example, this, that, that. When you're saying it, when you're speaking it, you can, you, by all means, there is no harm to it. But it's different when you write it. OK, it's more using formal language. Next, error three, repetition. So there are different ways of students' ten tendency of repeating the word. Okay, it is not wrong. Sometimes you may want to repeat the word for emphasis. All right. So for example, words. It was a very hot day. I was feeling very thirsty. So you tend to use a lot of very and very. I, I presume when your teacher marks, sometimes they may, you know, use circle this, circle this, you know, telling you why you're repeating the words. So try and use another word. OK, what you can say is it was a very hot day. I was feeling extremely thirsty. Use model um, adverbs very extremely. All right. OK. So. I have another sentence here. I want you to try. So in this one, the word that is repeated is called it. OK, so my mother scolded me scolded me so i want you to try and write out your version or or how would you correct this so if you all have your phones with you just take a picture of this okay because i'm going to go to the next slide and then i'll see it on the chat box later all right then you have phrases so when i say phrases it could be phrases are basically more than one word so it was the end of the year my father had promised to take us on a holiday. He had promised to take us to Perth. So he had promised, he had promised. So that using the same same phrase, it is no harm. You know, you want to emphasize about his promise. It is okay. But you can you can write it in a different way. So for example, it was at the end of the year. My father had promised to take us on a holiday. He told us that we would be going to Perth that year. So I varied it. I just said, instead of saying he had promised, he told us. So it's different. Okay, so that is 
phrases. Okay. Next, arrow tree, repetition of sentences. So they may repeat the sentence. So what do I mean by sentence here? So if you see here, my mother is one person who is admired by many people. She is, she does not, she sees. So it's the same style of sentence repeating. She, she, she. So what you can correct it. Okay. My mother is one person who is admired by many people. She is strong and determined. Problems do not stop her. According to her, problems are challenging. So instead of repeatedly using she, 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 I minimize the use of she in the in this uh, passage. All right. So that is repetition. So repetition, you have words, phrases, and sentences. Next, there is redundancy. Redundancy is what? How do um? What do I say? Is something that is um, you have already mentioned it, and then you're mentioning it again, which is redundant. So, for example, in my opinion, I think. So students tend to say, in my opinion, comma, I think, I feel, it's the same thing. It has the same meaning, so it's redundant. Okay, it was happy and merry occasion. I felt satisfied and contented. You're just repeating the same thing that you have just mentioned. Happy and merry means the same thing. Satisfied and contented means the same thing. So it's just being redundant. Okay, all right. So, so, now I have these three sentences here, not before you enter into the room. So, they are also, um, there, there's also redundancy here. It's not actually knock, because if you see knock before you enter into the room, enter, you're already saying going in, and then you say into, it's going in, in. So, it's just being redundant. So, you can say knock before you enter, the room okay you must return return means you're giving back okay then you're saying back again so you're, you're re is just basically exaggerating okay so you don't have to have back all right the road in front of my house is wide in width wide is already you know you're showing this the, the length of it in terms of white so you don't have to say in width you can just say the road in front of my house is white Okay, all right. So these are very common errors that students tend to make. What you can do is if you want to know what are the different types of errors or you want to like read up on it, you can go online and just say common errors students make for continuous writing or common errors made in English essays writing. And there'll be a few. But these are basically the main things, repetitions, redundancy, as well as um, error two, error one was, um, sorry, precise vocabulary using the correct words. And the main main common one is using spoken in your written um, essays, which is not right. Okay, so all in all, what you do is how to write well is always be original. Grab your reader's attention. Okay, leave a lasting impression use local information. So if let's say you're talking about something that relates to local that you can relate it back to your own country, by all means go ahead because sometimes they will want to see whether you can relate the topic to whatever that is happening. You can apply. OK, so before we go on to the next part, I want to show you some continuous essays. So this is describing a person, a prominent Malaysian leader. OK. So here they described, they first they gave a description of the person, they named the person's name, all right? And then a bit of background, okay? His schooling, all right? And then his, um, what basically his contribution, how you see, how does he make in being in um, a leader, okay? And you give your conclusion, as in your hopes, or how how do you say, or why do you say he is a prominent leader? Okay, if that's you're describing the place, you mention the place, you mention the location of the place. Okay, um, uh, who founded the place? For example, like KLI was founded by I men was 
uh, uh, sorry, was inaugurated by Tun Dr. Mahathir. Okay, what are the different Akela? Like, you have different flows. What are they? Okay, what do they have other besides you know the airport, the flights? Okay, and then maybe you can say um, you can give your own opinion on it. Okay, if let's say you're writing a scene, you um, you describe the scene in details. For example, here I witnessed a serious accident. So you talk about how what is it that you witnessed? Okay, and then what exactly happened? And then you give your thoughts about it. So that's descriptive writing. Okay, then narrative pieces. Narrative pieces. Remember, okay, you need to have a a flow. So you start, you go, and then you move on. All right, so these are a narrative piece, okay? And then you have, sometimes you have narrative writing with a starting phrase. The widow had to work hard to bring up her little, sorry, oh, the widow had to work hard to bring up her little son alone. When you, when you have starting phrases, it's easier because you're giving you a guide, okay? So starting phrases or they, sometimes they say, end your story with this line, okay? So these are examples. All right, and then or which do you prefer living in the countryside or living in the city? For example, an argumentative essay. So I think, OK, and then you give your points. All right, follow as what your teacher has mentioned. So these are basically OK. So now let me show you a one word essay. So for example, a one word essay. Pollution, you can talk so many things about pollution. You can talk about different types of pollution. You can have an essay on different types of pollution. You can, you know, it's so many things. So you just pick on one. So you can talk about causes, right? You can talk about causes or you can talk about effects, right? Or you want to talk about both. It's, it's up to you because it's a one word essay. It's free flow. It's just you, you're given a topic. You just write it. OK, or if you are very, very creative, you can come up with a story about pollution. Okay, you can make pollution as a character. OK. Or you can talk about ways, you know, the general stuff. All right. So this is continuous writing. All right. So in your essay, all right, please, please be very, very, very um, take into consideration about all these things. OK, continuous writing is not very difficult. It is only difficult if you if you do not have enough practice with practice, with a bit of reading of different types of essays, with knowing, with recognizing different types of phrases, key catchy words, linkers, okay, um, knowing sentence structures, you will be fine. All right, so this is basically continuous writing. Now, I'm also going to do, so this is continuous writing. If you have any questions in, relate, in regards to continuous writing, you can let me know later on the chat box, okay? I'm going to be moving into your section D, which is your novel. All right. So section D, you have poem as well as your novel. So in in your uh, syllabus in different parts, some of you all are doing Dear Mr. Kilmer, some are doing Captain Nobody, some of you all doing a Sing to the Dawn. So for today's one, I'm just going to give you an example in relation to Dear Mr. Kilmer. OK, so section D novel, you have your content, which is 10 marks. You have language, which is five marks, all right? And all together is 15 marks, okay? 15 marks here plus five marks of your poem. Your section D is basically 20 marks, okay? All right. Now, for your content, this is basically the band descriptors. So when you when you are given um, when you are given something a task like based on the novel, all right, you need to give the your point as well as supporting points. So the supporting point has to come based on the novel, all right? Um, I know reading novels can take time. That's why they tell you to start from the start. Okay, uh, those days when I was doing my SPM, we had I, my time was step by wicked step. So for the which was, you know, we had the different stories. So what we do is what I'll do is I'll probably like, um, let's say character. I'll pick out like I'll pick out two or three characters that I know 
and then in, like when I read, I'll take notes. Okay, so it's it's good to read. It's good to read. I know some some they will say, oh, we'll just look at the synopsis and we'll look at you know, um, out, out, sorry, online notes or anywhere or whatever the teacher is giving us. But it's good to read so that you are aware about that of what the story about the novel. Okay, so this is the band descriptors for for um, novel. So you have nine to ten response. Okay, the team, main and supporting ideas, reasons. Okay. And then you have this. Then you also have language. Okay, accurate, occasional minor errors, sentence structure, varied sentence structures. Okay, so here you also have like you know um, different types of sentences. Okay, and then um, punctuation, spelling. All right. So these are the band descriptors. So when you do a novel, what you should do first is, of course, you need to read the text thoroughly. You need to know the events, the details of the events that happened. Okay, see the detailed flow of the story. Don't just look at notes where it says plot, you know, the, the different plot or the synopsis. You have to read, okay? Get a clearer picture of the characters and their action. I feel like nowadays the the topics is not like um, uh, talking about what are, what is your what is your favorite character or any, they won't ask you the synopsis of the story. They will ask you something that relates to um, it will be a very abnormal topic. For example, which character um, showcase a prominent leader? For example, okay. So you need to that's so why you need to read you need to read the entire story, okay. Analyze what you have read. So, for example, events that happened, you know, important events, lessons throughout. So, when you read, you suddenly pick up something that's interesting. Try and see what is the lesson there. Characters in action. Of course, you can refer to other notes that is there. You know, you have like, um, you have books that has SPM, like no uh, sorry, literature notes. Go through them. Okay. Once you've read the novel, of course, go through them. See what what is it. Um, what are the similarities and differences? Okay, focus on the plot, events that happen in the story, the characters and the characteristics, themes or main messages. Okay, moral values or lesson learned. All right. So write notes as reminders. First, you read the novel. As I said, you write. You know your text should not be clean. There should be short notes here and there to help you focus because your your novel. Is very wordy so if you're gonna like you know try and like refer refer you might waste time so try and have short notes here and there okay so try to answer as many questions as possible so try practicing you can what you can do is you can take I know um, this is mr. Coleman all that's quite recent what you can do is you can take previous past year papers okay you don't have to because Novels is a uh, different, so there's basically a standard question for all three novels. You can take previous past papers and try out the practice. OK, so don't just focus on like, oh, this is a new thing. I, I don't know what will come up tomorrow next uh, this time and all that. OK, the text evidence will help during revision. So just try and get evidence from the text. Those things, if you're not mistaken, we need to also write in the page number, but I think nowadays you don't have to. So just try and relate back to the story. OK, so for example, the sample question here, I just took you from a different um, from a different year. OK, um, it is important to have a person you look up to in your life. OK, so so that means here is a character that you look up into to in your life from a novel that you've read. Write about one character that you look up to. So basically in what you have read, write about a character that you look up to. So here I have chosen. So how would you answer this question? First is you read and understand the question. Give what is asked, a character who is determined. OK, plan your answer, draw a mind map. That means, OK, you chose a character. What is it? What is his traits? And then give supporting details. Support points with evidence taken from the novel. OK, practice. Check accuracy of your language. OK, always whenever you finish, revise what you have, what you have done. OK, so um, 
So for example, mine, I've taken dear Mr. Kilmer. So my point of my first point is he loved animals. All right. So then I told basically I told about his description about how is it that he loved animals. So there was a um, he went on a shooting range with his with his family. OK, and then um, he missed shooting a buck. And then everybody was was so surprised like why didn't he not shoot it and then he told his father that he doesn't he he doesn't shoot animals because he loves them and then the father told him don't come anymore so he loves animals that is a quality another point that i have is richard was a kind person so in the story there was something where he vandalized someone vandalized a tavern owned by hannah's parents okay and then the teacher brought a card to express regret for what had happened. Nobody came forward to write an apology letter, but Richard took the card and wrote, a letter, wrote you know, an apology letter. And that's how he built his friendship with Hannah. All right, so he was kind in that way. He was kind in a way that he, he took responsibility in saying sorry, even though he was not even involved. Okay, and another good thing was Richard was brave. He showed bravery. Because he he told his family and Mrs. Hansen that he wrote poetry, right? But before him telling that, it was a secret to the family and he only told it to Mr. Kilmer, all right? So he kept the secret of him writing poetry to, from anybody except the only person who knew it was Mr. Kilmer. So Mr. Kilmer had advised, all right, to share his poetry with people around him. So that means he told him, to not feel fearful of what his capabilities are. So he became brave and he told his family and Mrs. Hansen that he wrote poetry. So these are my three points. And then you have a conclusion. So you, your conclusion is where you come up with your own point of view. All right. I admired and respected Richard because he had good personalities. OK, so this is how you were to write your novel. OK, so for novel writing is very simple. You need to have you need to know your your main points. OK. All right. Pick up three to four. OK, and then you elaborate on your main points by showing evidence from the text. It's very, very important. OK, because you cannot come up with your own with your own supporting because they will know because they will have read the text. They will know the text. They will definitely have gone through. So if you're going to like um, give something which is not related to the book, you will be mine. You will get um, penalized for that. You might your content might be, you know, might they might cut on your content marks. So try not to try and elaborate. Give your own opinion on it. OK. So this is um, basically novel writing. Novel writing is pretty straightforward. OK, so the things that you may want to look out for is our characters, moral values or themes. OK, uh, any exciting moral values that you, you gather from the from from the novel uh, characters. OK, that shows bravery, for example, or the person that you admire in the in the novel. All right. Uh, plot. Uh, plot won't be asked unless they will ask you um, if, if in any of the um, novels, how would a different, if that's a different plot structure. But it, plot is not very, um, not so much these days, I would say, but more like themes, moral values, lessons learned. Okay, um, characters a lot. All right, so this is novel and the one which I did before was uh, writing. OK, so I'm going to stop here for now and I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Zani and then I will see if any um, comments given on Q&A and then I'll get back to you. All right, so uh, over to you, Zani. Flexible. O. Optimistic. 
U. N. Nurturing. D. Data driven. A. Analytical and creative. Innovative and different. O. Other centered. N. Novel. Sanidan? Hi, Mrs. Um, all good? All right. Yeah. All right. We okay. Continue to the Q&A session. Okay, thanks. All um, right. all right. So, um, well, to answer Daniel's um, writing, maybe um, you might want to, it, it, I think it all depends on the topic. If let's say you're writing a narrative piece, um, sometimes you might want to lower down or I would say um, not have very, um, how, how I say, not be very aggressive. So when I when we, they say emotions, it could be the words that you use, all right? So try and uh, use maybe, instead of being very, very harsh, maybe just use um, very soft words. If let's say um, you're talking about a person being upset, you can just say, I was feeling disappointed. You shouldn't be saying that I was feeling very furious. I felt like my heart was coming up, so don't be too extreme, okay? Uh, if you have left something important, point needed in the introduction, you can always go back, right? That's why when you read, when you write your essays, what you do is after every paragraph, okay, go back and rewrite that paragraph again, okay, and then add what is necessary before going back. But before going, before continuing, however, if let's say as you're writing, you realize that, oh, wait, I forgot to write something in my intro. I forgot to, I forgot to write something in my body. You can add on. There's no, um, there's no, there's no harm to it. You can have like this, um, like an inverted, like a arrow. Okay, maybe if I were to show it to you here. Uh, okay, it's like, um. It'll be something like this, for example. Uh, you know? It'll be something like this, like... Uh, it'll be something, sorry, something like this. Okay? And then you, you write. Okay? And then um, another question was... What is the example? So, uh, Raj, I had given one example just now on pollution. There could be exa other other one with essays like love, right? And um, or uh, friendship. Okay, so you will you will see. Uh, you can you can just Google any other types of one word essays. Um, okay. Uh, you won't be punished if you're writing something that is um, because it's your piece and you're just writing for um, essay purpose. So don't worry about um, if you feel that you're being uh, too too violent, but try not to you know be too um, too judgmental or too how do I say like um, very sensitive. Be, become more sensitive. Okay. Uh, yes, you can use spoken language for speeches and dialogues. Make sure it's in inverted commas. Uh, yes, you're allowed to use in um, dialogues. Okay. So uh, I think I have answered all the questions. If there is no other questions, I would see you all next week um, uh, at next week Tuesday. All right. So have a good have a good week ahead. Take care. Stay safe. And thank you guys. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Ayes. All right, now before I end the session, I would like to have a small announcement to make. 
So, Help University School Achievers Scholarship Award is currently available. So, we do highly encourage all Form 5 leavers to submit your applications through our web page. So, School Achievers Scholarship Award recipients may receive either a full or a partial scholarship to further your education and help university or help academic program. Okay, so by the way, that is all for today. Thank you so much for coming and uh, we shall continue tomorrow. Okay, and uh, we will start at 8 o'clock as usual. So for tomorrow, our class will be at Maths, Mathematics Tambahan, and uh, we shall see you again tomorrow night. All right, take care, stay safe, and have a good night.